Chapter 16, Cybercrime Loss Valuations. As you well know, cybercrime losses have been growing rapidly in, in the last several years. You hear about it in the news all the time. And so these companies that face cybercrime losses have to compute the amount of the losses. Now, reasons to quantify the losses would be to report the crime to law enforcement, to hopefully recover damages from an insurance policy, if you have that kind of coverage, and to record for your own internal purposes. Some state statutes will describe what losses are dealing with cybercrime. So you look in those statutes and see what you can claim as a loss when you're faced with a cybercrime event. So for example, verification cost to check the systems, restoration cost to put systems back online, market value or replacement value of the property or service, lost profits, reasonable value of loss caused by unavailability, and you can look at the others yourself on the screen. The federal government also identifies certain items as damage losses due to cybercrime. These would be responding to an attack, cost of making a damage assessment, and this is where the forensic accountant can help out, time and cost of restoring the system, loss of revenues from interruption, and other damages. Even the SEC back in October 2011 recognized the seriousness of these kind of problems. And so they recommended that these potential attacks, you know, losses from these attacks, should be disclosed in the financial statement notes. Here are some examples of tangible losses that you could help compute. The market value or replacement cost of property destroyed in an attack. The servers, computer systems, and so forth. External investigation cost lost worker productivity, and cost of replacing lost data. So these are the tangible losses. Examples of intangible losses include the unavailability of a website. If your website's down, your customers cannot buy anything. So you're losing out on revenues, and as number two says there, lost profits. Also, another intangible loss would be destroyed or lost information contained on compromised PCs. Let's talk about insurance for a minute. Hopefully you have good, adequate insurance coverage and use as the forensic accountant. If you're helping a company, you know, assess its risk as to any kind of losses, make sure you consider these and bring an insurance agent on board to help look at what is covered and what is not covered. You wanna make sure that losses from cyber attacks are covered. Make sure that's in the policy. So. You know, bring the, the insurance agent in on these conversations. We have first party liability, and this coverage is for direct damage to the insured from a cyber attack. You know, someone attacked you, it shut your systems down, destroyed data or machines. This is what's covered under the first party liability. Now, the third party liability provides coverage from the next acts of the insured, as for example, when the insured's computers are unknowingly used to launch an attack against a primary target. So for example, um, someone uh, sets a program on your computer, your business computer, and then later on, your computer is used to attack someone else's computer, that third party. They are gonna come back and sue you. So make sure you have both first party and third party liability covered on this. Looking a little further into the first party cybercrime insurance, the first party cybercrime insurance covers things such as destruction on your property, theft of data, credit cards, loss of income up to 12 months after the attack, or extortion from threats such as introducing viruses to a network. Also introducing fraudulent information into a network, defamation, and you can see a few more in here. On this last slide, we see how an insurance carrier will evaluate companies and determine how much to charge for the insurance policy. So the second point here, for example, if a company has extensive and proper use of encryption and passwords, as well as updated operating systems, then these would have the, the effect of reducing the cost of a policy. So the insurance carrier will come in, assess the situation, and then use that for pricing out the policy. That's a very quick review of cybercrime. Now, 
go back into the chapter. There are several good examples to work through with numbers. They show you how to compute those losses, and so make sure you follow those in a lot of detail. All right, that's it for Chapter 16. Good luck with your studies.